Hello and welcome to the drum computer tutorial series. My name is Tom Cosm and over the next four or five videos I'm going to get you familiar with the features of this fantastic synthesizer pattern generation machine. We're going to focus on the synth engine today, we're going to focus on sound generation, but let's just have a quick look at this top panel. We have our play button here, this will start and stop the sequence. We have our pattern indicator, so this will tell us what pattern is currently playing. We have the pin tool, so when this is enabled, if you load a new preset, it's going to retain all the sequencer information, but update the sounds. We'll make sure that's off for now. We have the make kit button. This will randomly generate a sound for each one of the individual eight drum hits. And there's one more. If we go to the sequencer page, you'll see it says drag MIDI 16 bars, and then a hand symbol. We can choose a different amount of bars here if we want. And then in your host or onto your computer, you can use this hand symbol and drag and drop. And this will create a MIDI file with all the sequencer information, all the notes, all the velocity, which is pretty damn neat. Anyway, back to the synth page, this is what we want to focus on. You'll see there's three main units in the middle. It's a three-layered synth, there's three sound generation units, and those are the resonator, the wavetable, and the resynth. The resonator is an exciter. It's the transient. It's the hit, the snap, the bang, when the stick hits the membrane, the start of your sound. The wavetable is the middle area. It's the, the body of the sound. And the resynth is a really cool liquid metal long tail noisy kind of generator machine it's quite atmospheric uh, it's very good for adding character and flavor to your sound so all three of these combined as a group are a very powerful set of tools to create drum sounds and they all talk to each other as well in an interesting way but i'll get into that shortly now let's look at the parameters that they all have in common they all have a mute button up the top here so if you just want to play one or two of them not all three of them you can do so there they all have a pitch parameter which determines the pitch of that sound that's generated and this has a fine tune as well we have a level so we can change the volume or the amplitude of each one of them a filter enable button so we can turn this on and off to send it over to the filter area we have a pitch mod dial we have a, a velocity to pitch mod enable enable button so that means the velocity of the notes in the sequencer will affect the amount of the pitch mod and we have a decay which is how long the sound takes to decay into silence to, to drift away so those are the ones that it has in common over on the left we have a global parameter area and before I get into that I'm just going to go into the sequencer page and I will make a sequencer video soon so don't worry about not following along here I'm just going to choose the initialize patch and I'm going to put down four beats one two three four jump back to our number one drum sound and hit play and have a listen very good so in the global area we have another drop down menu this is our presets for individual hits so I'm going to pick the first kick drum very good, we can cycle through these. Excellent, or we can click on the actual picture of the kick drum and it will randomly generate a new kick drum for us. These are all unique, totally unique sounds. And you might be going, well, hey Tom, how come when you click randomize, we don't get things like snares and hats and noise and all this other stuff when it's changing the parameters randomly? Well, Sugarbytes have created a profiling system. So by choosing one of these profiles and clicking on the random button, the parameters will randomize to something within the range that fits that particular sound. For example, if I choose snare and hit the random button, now we're getting snares. I'm just going to turn the reverbs down for this tutorial video. More snares, more snares, more snares. We could choose a synth. Or we could choose a clap. Very good. Now below this uh, image here, we have two options, the pitch and the roll mapping options. This is to do with the mapping area down here. I'm going to make another video on this, so I'm going to turn these off and just move past these for now. We have a flam time dial. So if you listen, you can hear these three sound generators are getting one trigger. It's playing once. But as I move the flam up, it introduces two more triggers randomly, but at a certain amount of milliseconds. So it makes it kind of sloppy and organic if you like very good now let's move on to the actual sound generation areas we have as i said a resonator wavetable and resynth i'm going to mute the resynth and mute the wavetable i'm just going to focus on the resonator for now and i'm going to just choose a kick drum and let's randomize it very good turn off the filter and i'm just going to double click these parameters so they're back at their initial value just for this particular thing bring the level up a bit so what is the resonator how does it work it's a self oscillating high pass filter it's modeled off the 808 self oscillating bandpass filter a self oscillating filter works by feeding the sound back into itself over and over and over really really fast it creates resonance it creates feedback it's a feedback loop 
but in order for that to actually happen it needs to be fed an initial sound it needs to be fed something at the start and then that sound is fed back into itself to create the tail and the more resonance we have the more feedback we have so how do we feed it something? Well, we have a drop down menu here called, well, this is the exciter. This is the initial sound that gets fed back into itself. We have envelope, noise and envelope, wavetable, and resynth. So I'm just, just going to stick with the envelope for now. And I'm going to turn the tone up, bring the effects down as well. So we'll turn the tone up. So the envelope sends it a single impulse. It's like a single click. It's a very simple sound, but because of the resonance of the filter, it feeds back and we get a sound like this, which sounds like a kick drum. Awesome. So as I bring the resonance down, the feedback or the self oscillation is much shorter. If we bring it all the way up, we get big long tails. Very good. Now we also have a partials dial. This is a three voice oscillator. And as we bring the partials dial up, it introduces new partials and it also increases their frequency. So it increases the amplitude and the frequency of two extra voices. And it's quite in harmonic which is good for drum sounds okay so what if we want to do something more than a kick drum we're kind of generating a sine wave with this resonance here let's choose a different exciter i'm going to choose noise and envelope and let's have a listen and now we've introduced white noise into the mix so let's bring that up again very good but you'll notice we're not getting any sort of feedback from the noise and that's because the decay knob and the resonance knob work a little bit differently than um, the other decay knobs here they they dance together you really got to play with them together because the decay here is actually the decay of the initial exciter signal that's coming in so if I bring this up really long we get more white noise and as I bring it down we get hardly any let's bring the partials up let's bring the pitch up a little bit and let's bring the pitch mod up to add that um, add that envelope to the actual pitch and that means we can bring the pitch down Very good. Now, I mentioned before we had a tone dial. So what this is, is it's a two pole filter and it just extenuates a particular particular tone in the frequency range. So as we bring that up, you can just find the sweet spot of what you want. I'm just going to go back and add, change this to an envelope for now. We won't get into the wavetable and recent because they're quite complicated sound sources for the exciter, but let's just choose this envelope here. Make a cool kick drum and we'll move across and make a snare. That sounds good to me. Okay, back to the sequencer page. I'm going to put a snare on two and four, like so. Let's go across here. Let's turn off the resonator and turn off the recent for now. And I'll go into my mixer area. And I'm just going to solo the, uh, the snare track that we've just created. So at the moment, we're just listening to the wavetable. Let's reset all the parameters like we did before to scratch because I'll move them as we, get, as we go through everything. So the wavetable as it says, is a wavetable synthesizer. And we can load uh, from a whole bunch of different wavetables that Sugar Bias have provided to us, or we can import our own sample, which will, it'll create a wavetable from that. But we can choose any one of these here. I'm just gonna choose a sine one. Let's have a listen. And we can use this wave dial to cycle through the wavetable and find the cycle that we want, which will repeat over and over. Of course, we have a decay, and this one works more traditionally. So this will extend that cycle out over and over. And we can change the pitch around. Now the other thing that we have here is we have an FM dial. So we can actually frequency modulate the wavetable from the resonator. So if I choose just an envelope mode here, it's going to produce just a sine sound. And I'm going to bring the FM up. Bring the decay and the resonance out. Bring the pitch right down. So we're now frequency modulating the wavetable signal with the resonator. And of course, the thing to do in these types of situations is to assign an envelope to the actual wave selector dial. Um, this is already set up here in our modulation generator down here. So you see we've got a nice curved envelope like this, and we've already got wavetable as our source. We'll get into the modulation area soon, but as I bring this up, you'll see that the wave is actually changing now. We can change the speed to something a bit slower. You can see the wave is now changing to this envelope. And let's bring the frequency down, frequency FM amount down. We've even got a modulation here on the FM, so this envelope is actually applied to the FM as well. 
Let's bring it right down and just have it at the start. Let's bring the pitch down. And bring the decay right down. Remember, this is just the body, so this isn't really supposed to sound like a snare just for now. If I change this back to a noise and envelope, bring the decay right down. And let's enable the resonator. And let's bring some pitch mod on that wavetable. Bring the decay right down on the wavetable because it's sounding too uh, too harmonic. Very good. The other dial that I haven't mentioned yet, let's turn the filter off here. The other dial that I haven't mentioned is the ring modulator. So there's a separate sine wave oscillating extremely fast and the ring modulator determines how much that oscillates or changes the amplitude of the actual signal produced by the wavetable. So the ring modulator goes all the way up to 100% and that 100% is two octaves, 50% is one octave. So let's bring this up to 50%. Let's bring the decay out again. So there's one octave. Let's go up to 100. So that's two octaves. If you go in between 50 and 100, you're going to get some really inharmonic stuff, which is good again for snares. Or we can go down into the negatives to so go down negative one octave or down negative two octaves. So the idea is to find a good sweet spot. I'm going to pick around 20, something inharmonic, and bring the decay back down. And let's bring the pitch up as well. Okay, I'm back. There was a fly in the room. I just had to get rid of him for the recording. So let's bring up the pitch mod amount. Maybe a bit more FM on the envelope. Or a bit less. A bit less decay. Bring up the tone of the resonator to get more of a snap in the snare. And bring the decay down. Very good. Let's put the kick in. Sounding good so far. Let's go back to the sequencer and I'm going to put in some hi-hats on the offbeats here. Like that. Very good. And let's go over here and have a look at what we've got. Um, make sure the reverb and stuff is down. And I'm going to turn off the resonator wavetable and we're just going to focus on the resynth here. So let's solo this. Very good. Straight away it sounds really good. So the, we the, the resynth is a single hit. It's not, it's, it's kind of a single hit version of the wavetable. So in our drop down menu here, we have a whole bunch of categorized sounds that we can actually use. For example, hi-hats, we can choose all different types of hi-hats. We can cycle through them. But what's actually happening here is it's converting it into something called a noise table. And that means that we can extend the decay. It's going to loop this particular sample over or over and over and over, but it's going to do it in a way that it doesn't produce a particular type of pitch, which is extremely handy and extremely exclusive, I believe, to drum computers. So you can actually bring the decay right out and you'll notice the sound has a long tail that sounds organic like the original sample without actually producing any kind of tonality. So I can move the pitch around. Bring that decay right out. Very cool. Let's move through some more hats here. Sounds good. We also have a big color dial in the middle. This of course determines the low pass filter. And as we bring it up, we have a high pass filter. You can see the image here in the GUI or in the UI. So that is the recent engine. Again, three really powerful tools and all grouped together, you can get them really humming and really singing to produce some incredible sounds. Let's go ahead now. I'm just going to go into my sequencer and I'm going to randomly generate something for number four. And we'll make sure we solo this as well. So I'm just going to randomly generate a few patterns. Very good. And let's go into number four. I just want to show you something with the resynth. We don't just have to use claps or cymbals uh, or hats. We can use chords. So I'm going to choose, let's do a minor seventh. So it's actually really good for synth sounds as well. Let's bring the decay right out. Bring the pitch down. Excellent. And let's try something else. Let's use synth. We'll go for this acid bass. Oh, super cool. 
I'm just going to quickly randomize the snare to something. I'm getting a little bit tired of hearing the one that I made before. Turn on the recent. Sounds good. Okay, back to number four, that cool acid sound. I'm going to go ahead and add all of the notes here. Very good. I'm going to randomize the velocity as well. well. Actually, let's have it going in a ramp up. Awesome. Let's talk about the filter now. So everything in this particular um, this particular drum hit is being sent to the filter, but we've got the resonator and the wavetable muted, which is fine. But this is our filter here. It's set. We have a high pass. We have a peak. We have a band pass, a low pass, a formant, and a notch. I'm going to set it to a low pass. And let's just bring it down so you can hear it. Let's just solo the uh, acid bass. We can choose to get rid of all the solos here and just solo this one. Bring the decay up again. So this is our filter. We'll bring it right down. And of course you can see the velocity here in the modulation matrix is already assigned to the cutoff. Let's get rid of that. Let's change this modulation generator to a downwards envelope and we've already got the cutoff assigned here so let's bring that up so each notes we're going to get a hit we'll change the we'll turn off beat mode and we'll bring it short bring up the resonance very good the two other things we have here are the insert effects so we have a distortion we have a tube and a bit rate sample reduction and we also have a compressor so let's bring up the distortion on that sound see how it sounds very cool, let's try the sample bit reduction. I like the tube better. Let's bring the kick back in. Excellent, and we also have a compressor and the compressor can be sidechained. So I can bring this right up. Very good. But I can also choose the sidechain from drum hit number one, which is the kick. Let's bring the level up of the kick. Bit more decay. Oh, sorry, over here on the kick. You can hear now that 4, that synth sound that we've got, is now being sidechained. You can see the level there as well. Excellent. Now quickly going through the modulation stuff. As I said, we've got two modulation generators. We can choose the waveform that we want down here. We could choose envelopes or, or squares or random. Or we could do things like choose a sign and we could bring the, bring the rate down and we can put it on loop mode. So that's just going to continuously loop over and over. And because it's attached to the cutoff, you'll see it's moving around and around. Let's change the speed a bit faster. Or we can choose beats mode and we can make it say 16th notes. Let's bring the cutoff down the cutoff uh, modulation amount down and bring up the filter actual cutoff very good let's make this into down linear very cool and we can even assign this to say pitch number three which is of the recent here or we can go in reverse oh well, it's sounding pretty good let's bring the pitch up Excellent. So we have two of these modulation generators and of course over here we have the modulation matrix. We have four opportunities to choose a dis uh, source and a destination. So let's turn off the cutoff and the pitch here. You notice before we had the velocity assigned to the cutoff but I turned that knob down. Let's bring that up again. So this is the velocity coming from the sequencer, this area here. And you'll see now that that velocity is now applied to the cutoff. Or we could do as we did before, we could choose pitch 3. Very cool. And of course we have four of these. It's worth exploring the uh, source values here. We've got our envelopes, our mod generation, mod wheel, pitch bend, aftertouch, our sequencer uh, parameters. But if we go down the bottom here, we've got wavetable, resonance, and recent. So we can actually use the waveform coming out of each one of these three individual sound generation units and use that as a source. We can use the waveform as a source to modulate something. So it's basically a super, super experimental advanced frequency modulation style machine. And I will get into those in the last video where I'm just going to have a jam and make something really crazy. But just to show you again, Sugarbytes, amazing, amazing, uh, comprehensive 
things you can do with all the modulation that's what i love about their products is the amount of stuff you can change with other stuff i love it anyway that is the synth engine video uh stay tuned for the next one where we go through the sequencer and the midi stuff my name's tom cosm have a good day Thank <laughs> you.